and welcome to National Focus. I'm your presenter, Tasia Prosak. Coming up, hundreds of prospective students to join the Dominica State College, police destroy over $22 million worth of illegal drugs, and Chinese ophthalmology mission deemed successful. Stay tuned for the details of these and other stories after this. A lot of bathtubs are blamed for bruises. Some staircases are accused of being responsible for broken bones. Doors are occasionally viewed suspiciously as causing lesions. A high percentage of tables are accused of producing bleeding or trauma. Violence against women is a crime, and it's everyone's responsibility. It's inexcusable. If you're a victim or witness of physical or psychological violence or abuse, seek help and denounce the perpetrator. Thanks for staying with us. Hundreds of students from across the island converged on the campus of the Dominica State College on Monday, August 25th, for the introduction to a new phase of their academic journey. DSC, your gateway to success, is the theme for this year's orientation, which will run for the entire week. An official opening ceremony was held to formally present the deans of the various faculties to the prospective students and to apprise them of pertinent information which will facilitate their experience at the college. Dr. Donald Peters, president of the Dominica State College, congratulated the students on the achievement at the CSEC examinations. He also admonished the incoming students to be responsible for the course of their education. It also means that you have decided to take responsibility for your future and you can choose whatever career you wish. Hopefully, it will be a career you enjoy. College is a, no pla is a place where you not only learn responsibility, it is a place where you create lasting friendship, you learn to be tolerant, you learn to be civil to professors and other staff, you learn to be analytical and learn to articulate yourselves. It is also a place to have fun. Today you have a large campus with new buildings that make it easier to learn and to communicate and also to accommodate your many learning and co-curricular activities. During his address to the students, Peters expounded on what it means to be a DSC student. He advised that being widely read is one of the keys to their success. He said the school has zero tolerance for violence and reminded students that they are responsible for their conduct and successfully completing their journey at the DSC. You need to respect other people if they're not like you. Find people who like you and hang with them, but do not criticize people who are not cool or you think are not cool. Try to be a leader. Do not follow the actions of others if you believe the actions to be wrong. There's something I hear in the community called peer pressure. There's nothing called peer pressure in science. There's nothing pressure in you. People make decisions. So if somebody asks you to cut class, let's go drink beer and don't go to class, that's not peer pressure, that's you making a decision. So always try to make the right decision. Be civil to your fellow students. Respect your professors and respect the staff and they will respect you. Dr. Peters praised the overall appearance of the school and also noted the hard work of faculty and staff as well as the general good behavior of the 1800 students presently at the school. On Tuesday, students will be introduced to various faculties at the school. On Wednesday is Registration Day, Thursday is Meet the Parents Day, and Friday has been set aside as a day of fun activities. In more news, Parliamentary Representative for the Maho Constituency and Minister for Public Works, Honorable Raven Blackmore, has pledged that the completion of the link road from Campbell to Despo will be his main priority. The minister was speaking at the 11th inauguration ceremony of the Campbell Despo Village Council. I want to give you the assurance that as a member of parliament and as a member of the Labour Party administration, and in the next term, my first priority shall be the link road from Despo 
into Campbell so that we in Campbell, in less than five minutes, can drive from Campbell into their spot. And that is what we in the Labour Party stand for. The Honourable Minister for Community Development, Gloria Schillingford, also emphasised on the need for community rehabilitation. And I want to just encourage you to continue in the beautification um, of your community. It will bring about the well-being of your people and uh, also the health of your people. Speaking on behalf of the Honorable Prime Minister Roosevelt Skerritt, the Honorable Minister for Constituency Empowerment, Ambrose George, encouraged synchronization between villagers and council members for the betterment of the community. I would also want to implore the residents of both Despo and Campbell to work very closely with your council because by, the council by itself cannot do it all. Um, they can only do so much uh, in their own remit. But with your collaboration and your cooperation with the council and with consultation between you and the council, I'm sure that we can see positive results and benefits coming to you, uh, the people of Campbell and Despo. In more development news, a number of recent projects are providing tremendous employment benefits for the locals in a number of communities. The Tito Gorge project, which recently got over $260,000 towards the construction of an access road and bridge, will employ over 14 persons from the surrounding communities. The Honorable Minister for Tourism and Legal Affairs, Ian Douglas, says it is a priority for his ministry to ensure that persons from the communities are employed on those projects. When we hear about ecotourism, a lot of people oftentimes or, or most times think about ecotourism as just the greenery and the waterfalls and the rivers. But ecotourism is, is not just that. That's just one aspect of ecotourism. Ecotourism also entails the development of people um, in the, the tourism product and that is why our, our, our product has been um, in recent times centralized on people, on developing people and developing those communities, developing and empowering rural folk. The Honourable Minister mentioned a number of projects including work at the Trafalgar Falls and Emerald Pool. The goal is for the communities to take ownership of these projects. In Emerald Pool, you've heard in Emerald Pool, we've done some works where uh, Mr. Roy again have helped us with the water system and we continue to develop those projects. We did some work down at the pool itself in Freshwater Lake. We put some boats on the lake and we have handed those facilities over to local persons up um, in that area so that they can manage the project. Ministry of Tourism, just, we just construct the facilities and we provide general guidance and direction um, for the running and the management of those facilities. But at the end of the day, the work itself, um, to keep those facilities open and to keep them running, um, depends um, for, for, for a lot, in, in most part, on the persons who reside and live in those areas. The Honourable Minister says communities are realising the benefits of ecotourism and community tourism and are coming on board the projects. We're just finishing a facility in Capuchin at the Kana Heritage Site where the persons up there will take ownership of, the, of that facility. In Tatan, again, we have constructed a trail there for the young persons in Tatan to create uh, some employment for them and we'll be handing over a glass bottom boat so that they could use that in the tourism product to, to take persons out um, um, to experience um, the underwater uh, and, and the other marine um, attractions that exist in that area. In Marigot, we have constructed a facility and we'll be opening that facility soon. In Watton Waven, we've helped the guys up there with the construction of some warm pools, a trail, and, and a lot of other um, capital development work. So all over Dominica, persons are getting in on the action and, and really experiencing the benefits of community tourism and we continue to work with them the tourism minister believes that every community has a feature that can be developed as a tourism product. 
In more news, over $22 million worth of illegal drugs in the form of crack cocaine and marijuana were disposed of by the Commonwealth of Dominica's police force. On Monday, GIS News got a first-hand view of the destruction at the Mon Bruce Police Training School. Public Relations Officer and Assistant Superintendent of the Police, Claude Weeks, reported on the street value of these drugs. 14589242 dollars and 10 cents cocaine the value of cocaine and that is that is 540342.3 grams of cocaine that is um, just approximately 1190.2 pounds so that's that's really a lot of cocaine um, the, the value of the, the, the cannabis is a little bit lower, $7,187,209. Uh, so we see cocaine, which is a class A drug, um, costs um, and attracts a, lo a, a lot of money. Weeks noted that the amount of confiscated drugs reflects the determination of the Dominica police force. In effect, we are seeing over close to $22 uh, million dollars, uh, worth of value in the drugs, that is between cocaine and marijuana. That in itself is a true manifestation of the, of the unrelenting effort or the persistent concerted effort by the police department, the law enforcement agency, of course in collaboration with other agencies as we seek to combat the drug collaboratively. Um, and to minimize its impact um, in Dominica, particularly among our youth. The PRO also stated that the Dominica Police Force is committed in its duty to prevent crime and protect the citizens of Dominica. The police will not lie idly by. We are committed to do what we have to do, and that is to fulfill the mandate to ensure we prevent crimes, but as well to protect the people of Dominica. And we will go out with the resources, given our resources, uh, there are limitations, but I can say despite the limitations, we, we, we are going to continue to persevere, our police officers, particularly in the drug squad under the stewardship of uh, Inspector John Carbon, we are determined to, to fight. We, we have that burning desire and, and, and that uh, unquenchable thirst to, to combat not only fighting drugs, but criminality on a whole but more so our duty is to protect the nation and to protect our people, more so our young people, uh, from uh, the consuming drugs. We know that it can destroy them. We know that it can affect their school career. We know that, as I said earlier on, that it can destroy the family and more so, by extension, the Commonwealth of Dominica. So we are committed and will continue to be persistent in our endeavors. As a result of its commitment to positively impacting the community as a corporate citizen, the Dominica Water and Sewage Company, Dawasco, has sponsored two students to further their education. Naya Lockhart of Grand Bay and Isla Green of Mon Prosper are the newest recipients of Dawasco scholarships. What we wanted to do was to award these two scholarships based on merit and also on need and um, we invited the general public to send in applications. I think we received over 40 applications um, from members, uh, from our customers and we also invited members of staff who had children who had sat the exams and uh, some of our staff also sent in applications. So we have two categories, a child of a member of staff and a child um, of a Dawasco customer. The students will be awarded $750 per year to cover books and other supplies for five years of secondary education. Naya Lockhart, who will be attending the Pear Charles Secondary School, is the daughter of a member of staff of Dawasco, and Isil Green, who will be attending the Dominica Grammar School, is the son of a customer. The continuation of the scholarship is based on performance and so Regis advised the students that Dawasco is willing to offer more than just finances to ensure their success. We want to encourage both of you, Naya and Essel, to excel at your studies. We want you to take your studies very seriously and to make sure 
uh, that you, you know, ask your teachers questions. Many times children don't do well because they don't ask questions. Of course, along your, your, your five-year journey of secondary school, if there's anything we can do for you at Dawasco, besides um, awarding you the scholarship, if you need to do a research project, if you need to, to come to Dawasco to, to get assistance, to ask our engineers questions, our um, managers, our, you know, any one of our technical people questions, I'm sure we'll be happy to hold your hand along your five-year journey at secondary schools. The students in return were asked to help the company in its efforts to promote water conservation by becoming ambassadors for Dawasco at their schools. And we want to say to you that you are partners with Dawasco in helping to tell your peers that at school, at the new schools that you will go to, that they should close the pipes, they should not waste water, at home they should not waste water either. Both Naya and Essil had words of gratitude to express to their sponsor and parents. I would like to say thanks to the management of the Wasco for awarding me this scholarship. This scholarship will be of much assistance to my parents in allowing me to obtain a high school education. It will also serve as a motivator for me to work hard. Once again, thanks and may God continue to bless the Wasco to prosper and help the other students like myself to achieve their goals. I would like to say thank you to Dawa School and everyone who came here to see um, my friend and I. And I'd like to thank my mother and sister for encouraging me to work hard. Dawa School completes and starts a new cycle of scholarships every five years. Health officials, medical practitioners, and Dominican nationals have dubbed the Chinese mission Bright Journey a major success. Within just two weeks, successful surgeries were conducted on 86 cataract patients, 53 females, and 33 males. Addressing the closing ceremony on Friday, 22nd August, His Excellency Li Xiaoning, the Chinese ambassador to Dominica, expressed his confidence in the team's ability to accomplish the mission. I'd like to recognize that the Chinese government, uh, especially the Ministry for Health, I would say the, the Commission for Health and Family Planning, is that the way? Okay. Uh, in organizing and selecting the specialists for this trip. They are the best of the ophthalmologists that in China, including nurses that work with them, and also the, uh, the technicians that have come with, with the team to set up the, uh, all these instruments. Uh, uh, I heard that they used to just on one evening to uh, set up all the instruments and test them, and then start working the next Monday, uh, starting operations. According to Dr. Sadir Young, chief ophthalmologist of the 10-man Chinese team, the mission was an illustration of the amicable friendship between the governments of the Commonwealth of Dominica and China. There was uh, many cataract uh, cataract patients, patients need yeah. to be um, uh, uh, see the world again. So um, we represent the uh, Chi Chinese government. We uh, bring the friendship from uh, both countries. So I think through the um, like 10 days of surgery, uh, 86 uh, surgeries, all very successful. So uh, that means through our um, operation, we did it. We um, bring the friendship from the Chinese government, the Chinese people to Dominican countries. So I'm so happy about okay. that. Yeah. Dr. Young, who is also vice president of a well-established university hospital in Beijing, China, noted that most patients experience 2020 vision as soon as one day after surgery. Cataract patient and Belfast resident Jerome Lloyd also attested to the accomplishment of the Chinese mission. Before surgery, Lloyd indicated that he could only distinguish shapes and described his experience as exhilarating. It was a whole new world for me. I looked out there and I could recognize people out there. If you have not gone through it, you don't know. But this has been one of the most exciting experiences for me. 
Okay. Was it a fluke? Did it just happen? Maybe they just did this one it caught. I found out, no, it wasn't a fluke. The following week, same thing happened right there. I can say, I can see very clearly through here, and I want to thank the team for having given me that experience. If I were to be asked a question, do you think their mission was accomplished? I would say, definitely, I believe the mission was accomplished. The Bright Journey of Homology team was the first mission sent to Dominica by the Chinese government, making Dominica the second Caribbean country assisted in the quest to reduce cataract patients on the island. The Bahamas was the first country visited by another Chinese mission in April 2014, where surgery was performed on over 100 cataract patients. The mission was conceptualized in November 2013. And finally, the community of Delis adds one more centenarian to the list, making the number of centenarians Dominica 37. Mr. Emmanuel Albert, better known as Mano, turned 100 and a special service was held for him on Sunday 24th August with ministers of cabinet present. Parliamentary representative for the Lapling constituency, Honorable Peter Sejan, said the community of Delis must be doing something right. It tells me clearly that there has to be something that as a nation that we are doing right. And that irrespective of what some people may think, Dominica is doing well. That so many people are actually reaching 100 years. And when a community joins and celebrates 100 years with any individual within that community, it means that the community is doing something right. The Labour Party administration promised to give Mr. Albert $500 every month, free cooking gas, free water, and Domlek has agreed to give him free electricity. The Honourable Gloria Schillingford, Minister for Community Development and Gender Affairs, gave remarks on behalf of His Excellency the President, Charles A. Savre. Dear Mr. Albert, on behalf of the government and people of Dominica, and on my own behalf, I wish to extend to you my congratulations and good wishes on the occasion of the celebration of your 100th birthday on Sunday, 24th August, 2014. May the good Lord continue to bless you. Signed, Charles A. Savre, President of the Commonwealth of Dominica. The Honorable Prime Minister was represented by the Honorable Justina Charles, Minister for Culture, Youth and Sports. The Honorable Minister says, people like Mr. Albert are the reason why the Labour Party administration decided to place emphasis on the care of the elderly and hence the reason that the care of the elderly has been extended into the National Employment Programme. Under the National Employment Programme, in quite a few communities across Dominica, we've also engaged other people to continue to care for the seniors who we think require people to be out there to care for them. Because we know very often some of us as children, grandchildren, we may be engaged in other things. Some of us may be out of state, like in this family, but although they are out, they are extending their hand in caring for their relatives. But some probably are not in the position to do that. And so we know we have some of our seniors who are among us and require that hand to assist in meeting their daily needs. And so that is why the administration is extending the Yes We Care program into the National Employment Program to ensure that we have enough people out there taking care of our seniors. Mr. Albert says his secret is holding on to the good stuff and letting go of the bad. And that's the English news. Mark for St. Louis is next with the Creole Highlights. Hello tout le monde, bienvenue à ce nouvel en créole, non moins c'est Macfusson Saint-Louis. 
Premier Company NTRC fait donation ordinaire pour le comité de développement Kings Hill semaine passée. Mme Parlement Honorable Ambrose George, bien plaisir pour la donation. Là. Ça nous, nous, nous garde aujourd'hui assez. Nous avons en donation à un computer avec un printer pour un comité qui est responsable pour le développement à Kings Hill, Kings Hill Development Committee. Um, pour, pour servir à la communauté, uh, pour les jeunes gens, pour les uh, gens à l'âge. Um, et ça a servi à ce computer pour, pour ces, ces jeunes gens qui ont servi pour, pour l'école, pour l'éducation, uh, pour faire un mot pour faire un research, um, pour développer, développer une application uh, neuf uh, pour voir comment ça a aidé la communauté, à improve la communauté. Um, nous nous expérons aussi pour pour mon âge pour, pour venir là avec um, apprendre avec comment pour servir computer et si ça servir déjà pour servir pour pour service pour pour, pour taper service à, à gouvernement um, à à son à son computer à son ligne. So ouais c'est un bon um, gesture nous ne ajoutera um, c'est un promet un promet mon effet uh, pour ces mon là Kings parce que um, là nous nous wende on j'ai place ça, you center, et on sait bien là, c'est jeune monde, il a développé ces computers pour aider yo en développement yo. So ça fait jour avec mon mon certain qui a tout le monde qui a pressé avec servi à la bonne manière pour pour développer coyo coyo avec pour développer un communauté yo. En autre nouvelle, Dominique a continué à bénéficier de relations diplomatiques avec la République of China. On délégation docteur Zhi Hod Pei Salam. C'est un Dominique pour deux semaines où il a fait un lot Dominique pour l'opération pour tout et quatre-vingt. Un bagage qui est autant significant, c'est ça, c'est ce équipement qui servi pour rester en la main de l'hôpital Princesse Margaret. Le ministère de la Santé, honorable Julius Timothy, fait parole que ce équipement qui servi en département de l'hôpital Princesse Margaret aussi l'occasion de l'opération. Honorable Timothy aussi plaisir pour d'autres bagages, c'est le docteur qui a quitté. Va l'hôpital là. Uh, Docteur Chinese a fait le poisson moderne pour cataracte. Bagay, Docteur Z. Dominique Hazel, Shillingford Ricketts, fait Powell qui bénéficie mon Dominique. Et puis finalement, compagnie d'Orasco fait donation des scholarships à étudiants pour y attendre l'école secondaire en septembre. Présentation là pour en place pendant un petit cérémonie en l'office d'Orasco bon matin là. Selon officier relations publiques Edward Regist, ces scholarships plan c'est pour cinq années. Nous avons des scholarships, des légions qui passent sans dire qui est un common entrance exam. Avec yon ces enfants enfants hot guabe, avec un lot hot mon prosper. Naya Lokat, ces enfants en staff qui a travaillé ici à Dawasco. Avec M. S.L. Green, um, Hod um, Mon Prosper, ses enfants en monde qui um, en client d'Awasco. Um, ça nous fait nous inviter les gens pour vous faire application pour trouver des scholarships. Là. Yon Hod en staff d'Awasco, moi en monde qui travaille en Dawasco, avec un autre en client d'Awasco. Avec um, nous taper en pile différentes applications, mais nous choisissons des avec um, ces des um, enfants ça um, y ont trouvé un um, scholarship là. Bon, ça, ça nous fait aujourd'hui nous bio ça ça y supposé tout à um, taper. Y a qu'à taper um, uh, en haut um, 700 dollars um, matériaux puis on sort l'école avec y a qu'à trouver ça pour cinq années. Um, quand il y a progrès uh, à l'école, quand il y a fait bon à l'école, il y a qui a um, nous qui a baillé l'argent avec Mathieu tous les années. Mais c'est madame, ça c'est tout pour nouvelle en créole pour à présent. Non moins, c'est Mac Francis Au revoir. Coming up next, a useful tip that can save your life. Doasco recognizes that clean water is vital to healthy living. Therefore, it spares no effort in providing a clean, safe, and reliable system. Help keep 
our rivers safe and clean. Do not cut trees along the river banks and do not pollute with garbage, human or animal feces and chemicals. Think water, think life. Doctors have been recommending an aspirin a day to help keep heart attacks at bay for years. But did you know that taking an aspirin during a suspected heart attack increases chances of survival and minimizes damage to your heart? Aspirin helps reduce platelet clumping or blood clotting, which could cause blockage in the blood vessels. Research has shown that aspirin reduces the risk of death by 23% if administered when a heart attack is suspected and 30 days thereafter. If you think you or someone else is having a heart attack, have him or her chew one standard adult dose of aspirin for rapid intake. And that's all for this edition of National Focus. We always welcome your suggestions and comments. Drop us an email at gis at dominica.gov.dm or visit our website news.gov.dm. Like us on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash gisnewsdominica. You can also catch up on the past National Focus newscast on our GIS Dominica YouTube channel. On behalf of the GIS News Production team, I'm Tasia Flosak. Thanks for watching.